All right, the next part of the installation we're going to look at is selecting the best placement for your outdoor condenser. I recommend keeping it away from decks or patios where you might entertain and make sure that you have at least four to five feet of clearance above the unit where the hot air is discharged. Try and place the unit where it will receive as little direct sunlight as possible. It's also important to make sure there's enough room to service the unit, so place it a couple of feet away from the foundation. The condenser needs to sit off of the ground. Determine whether you want to pour a pad, or Hamilton does offer a condenser pad. I recommend these pads because on a new installation, all you have to do is level your ground, compact the dirt, drop your condenser pad, and set your condenser in place allowing you to complete the installation in one day. Whereas with a cement pad, you've got to lug home the bags of cement, set up a wood form, mix and pour the concrete, and wait for it to dry. Uh, our pads provide you with a much quicker way and a lot easier way of completing the installation the same day. What we're going to look at now is our Quick Connect outdoor condenser. The fittings are right down here for the 3 quarter and 3 eighths inch lines. Again, these come from the factory with caps on to prevent debris from getting inside. And before you make any connections here, you want to do the same type of test on the diaphragm to make sure that you have that bubbled feel and that there is resistance. There's a lot more resistance here because the majority of the refrigerant is actually contained in the outdoor unit. Whether you have a sweat condenser or a quick connect condenser, the refrigerant inside is enough to handle about 15 feet of line set. So the majority of that refrigerant is stored in the outdoor unit. On the Quick Connect system, remember in addition to the condenser, the coil and line set are all pre-charged with the 410A refrigerant. Once connected properly, it's ready to operate. I'm going to remove the access cover to show you what's inside and where you're going to make your electrical connections. There's usually only a few sheet metal screws that keep the cover on, but the metal is folded in such a way to protect this area from moisture and keep water from flowing into this location. Once you take the cover off, you're going to see a few parts in here. In this location are the two wires that connect from your thermostat wires leading back to the Y and C terminal on the control board of the furnace. When the system is sent into cooling mode, these wires receive 24 volts. And when the condenser receives this 24 volts, the contactor has a magnetic switch which engages the 240 volts through the condenser. And the unit kicks on so the fan and the compressor both start to run. The 240 volt power leads connect to the contactor right here at the bottom. The power leads of the weatherproof electrical whip come up through the axis hole and the whip connects back to the outdoor disconnect. It mounts right here on the bottom of this plate and here's your grounding screw. This part that resembles a soda can is the capacitor. One of the things to note on the capacitor is that it's flat on the top and the bottom. When the capacitor fails the top might become bubbled. It can also feel that it, when it does not look bubbled but usually, if you see a bubble, it's an easy way to diagnose that you've got a bad capacitor. If, after several years of use, either your fan or your compressor or both don't run, but you know you're getting the call for cooling and the 24 volts to the outdoor condenser unit, shut off the main power and take off the access panel and have a look at your capacitor to see if maybe it did bubble up. Replacement is very easy and the connections are labeled at the top of the capacitor where the wires connect. This can save you a lot of time and money for a service call for something that's fairly easy to replace yourself.